every Toastmasters meeting has a timer to ensure that a speaker is speaking for a minimum amount of time and not exceeding a certain time limit. This is mainly done because in even places outside of Toastmasters, whether you are doing things like public speaking or presenting somewhere, you're going to be expected to speak within a certain time period. You're not going to be allowed to just say a few words and turn off or keep droning on and on to really bore the audience. And that's why the role of timer is really important to make sure we're sticking to our particular time allotment. And that's what we're going to discuss here today. How to play the role of timer effectively. Hey, my name is Radeep and I'm the founder of Frantically Speaking and I love learning about effective communication and sharing those learnings with you so that you can level up your communications game as well. So we're going to break this down into two parts. One is the introduction of the timer role and second is the actual timer role. And before we get into that, there are just four things you need to keep in mind that you need to bring with you for the meeting when you're nominated for the role of time. Those are, that, that, that is a pen, a paper, a stopwatch, which even your phone can do for that, and your reporting cards. If you're not sure what the last one is, we'll discuss that later in the video. So let's start off with the introduction. Now we're going to be introduced before the prepared speeches, most likely by the Toastmaster of the day. So you need to keep four things in mind when you're called on for your introduction. The first thing you need to speak about is a little bit about yourself. Don't spend too much time over here because the person introducing you has most likely already prepared an introduction about you. So the audience is already a little familiar with who you are. Focus more on the next aspect, which is explaining to the audience what your role as timer is and why is it important. So this is something you already discussed earlier. You can talk about why speaking within a certain allotted time period is important. And we've detailed out the entire script word by word for you. So you can get that if you click in the link below. It's a downloadable PDF. You can take that for your meeting as well. Um, it'll give you a base for what you need to say as a timer. And you can add your own like spunk to it. But if you just if this is the first time you're performing the role, it will give you a good foundation to begin on. The next thing you need to talk about is your timer cards. Now the timer cards are of three colors. You have the green, the yellow, and the red. Green indicates qualifying time. Yellow indicates target time. And red indicates finish time. Now, for example, if you're giving a speech, of, if you're timing a speech, which is of about five to seven minutes, in the five minute speech, uh, at the five minute mark is when you show the green card to indicate that, okay, they've spoken for a minimum period of time. Uh, when they speak for about six minutes, you show the yellow card, which is the ID or target time that you need to speak for. And uh, when you show the red card, when, when, when the timing hits seven minutes is when you show the red card to show that that's their finish time. Now keep in mind that the speaker also has a 30 second grace period on either side of the speech. So in a five to seven minute speech, if they speak for more than four minutes, 30 seconds or less than seven minutes, 30 seconds, that's good enough as well. Now, the reason why uh, timing comes in, into a slightly more important play in a Toastmaster setup is because if you don't um, speak for the minimum amount of time or you exceed your given time limit, you don't qualify to be selected as the best speaker towards the end of the meeting. And a similar thing follows for the table topic master and the general evaluator. This entire thing is detailed out word for word in the script, so check that out in case you need something to reference while watching this video. One thing I do want to add is when it comes to the role of Table Topics Master and General Evaluator and when it comes to reading out those timing guidelines, but some clubs do this a little differently. So in most cases, what clubs tend to do is that they, they would either have you speak only of the timing guidelines for the prepared speeches in your introduction section and then as and when the table topic section, session or the evaluation session are about to happen, session, session are about to happen, um, they'll call you on right before that session actually begins to read out the timing guidelines for those particular speeches. And we'll get into what the exact timing guidelines are for table topics as well as general evaluation. Now we're going to talk about the role. When you're nominated as timer, make sure you arrive at the meeting a few minutes early so that you can catch a seat in the front row. And I'll get to why that's actually important. Another reason to come early is so that you can kind of confirm the timings of all the speeches with the speakers or the vice president of education. Most speeches in Toastmasters are about five to seven minutes long, but there are certain exceptions like icebreaker speeches are slightly shorter in length. And as the speeches go higher in levels, they, the, the duration of the speeches can also increase. 
So you will need to make a note of that if that is the case so that you know when to show which card. Now, when the speaker gets on stage to deliver their speech, you need to start the time as soon as they say their first word or they make some sort of indication that shows that the speech has begun. So it doesn't necessarily have to be a word, but even a body language movement or an introduction of a prop can indicate the beginning of the speech and that's when you start your time. And as the time progresses and as and when it hits those marks of qualifying time, target time, finish time, you start showing the cards accordingly. Now, when you hold up the cards, and this is where sitting in the front row becomes important, hold it high enough so that the speaker takes notice, but not so high that it's disturbing the people behind you. So hold them up, but the speaker can see them. When you hold them up, don't take them down immediately. The speaker might have missed it. Keep it held up until you have to show your next card and until the speech actually ends. Once the speaker is done with the speech, immediately make a note of them in your notebook. You can also use a reporting template. We've made one for you, which you can download. It's a downloadable PDF, so you can print it out and take it for the meeting and use it to make your reporting process slightly easier. And the similar process is followed for the table topics and the evaluation session as well. Now we're going to go over a few timelines, a uh, few common timelines for a few speeches within Toastmasters. So you have your icebreaker speech, which is for four to six minutes. So at four minutes, you show the green card, five minutes, you show the yellow card, and six minutes, you show the red card. Then you have the five to seven minute speech, which is the most common speech timing in Toastmasters, which we already discussed. Then you have your table topics. Now, table topics goes on for about a minute to two. So at, um, at uh, when one minute ends, you show the green card. At 1.5 minutes, you show the yellow card. and two minutes, you show the red card. Now, keep in mind here that in a table topic session, the 30 second grace only applies to the latter side of the speech. So the speaker cannot speak for 30 seconds lesser than one minute, but they can go beyond two minutes by a period of 30 seconds. And the general evaluation section is pretty similar to prepared speeches, wherein the timing is about two to three minutes. So at two minutes, you show the green card, two and a half minutes, you show the yellow card, and three minutes, you show the red card, and the 30 second grace applies to both sides of the speech. And that brings us to the reporting part. Now, Again, this might differ from club to club. Some clubs like to call on the timer to give the time and report after every individual section of the meeting, whereas some clubs uh, do the entire time report for all three sections along with the general evaluation that comes slightly more towards the end of the meeting. So when you're called on to give a report, you can come up, just read out, just make sure you're facing the audience and not the uh, board or wherever the timings are being written down for the audience and you're reading them out one by one in a manner which is slow enough so that the person who's making a note of them can keep up with your pace but not so slow that's really dragging on and boring the audience. And the last thing we're going to talk about is delivery. So when you take up the role of timer, don't worry too much about memorizing a script or anything along those lines. The role of timer is mainly there for newer members who need to get more comfortable with the stage. So when I joined Toastmasters, I was really, really nervous to give my first speech. So the role of timer kind of helped me get more accustomed to the stage and just get more familiar with speaking in front of crowds. So don't worry too much about being perfect with this role. Um, as long as you have a basic script with you, and even if you're taking it out there and reading it, almost reading it out to the audience, it's fine as well. Just make sure you're making a note of all your of all the speaker's timings, and that part is a little organized so that we're not really jumbling up the different times with the different speakers. And that's about it. If you have any other questions when it comes to Toastmasters, public speaking or communications, we have a whole website dedicated just for that with a bunch of articles and in-depth resources. So go check out franticallyspeaking.com.